Hello. Sir, will we start, sir? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, yes we can. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, very good afternoon and warm welcome to the respected participants. And today's special invite and our valued chief guest, uh, Dr. Vijay sir, CEO and founder, Aijan Services and Solutions Singapore. I am so happy to meet you all in this day six, that is the end of the day, faculty development program on A for educators. A six days faculty development journey. It's my great honor and privilege and so grateful to introduce our eminent speaker, Dr. Vijay sir, uh, CEO and founder of IGEN Services and Solutions, Singapore. He is having a dynamic professional with a total 22 plus years of rich experience, including eight plus years in retail banking operations, ICICI Bank, HDFC and IDBA Bank, and 14 plus years in implementing Terminals T24, the world's heading core banking system, presently CEO of IGEN Services and Solutions in SG and so forth, engaged in various clients across the global line, UAE, Zambia, Australia and so on. And then he did his PhD in technology management in banks from Anonymanium Sundranar University, Ternal Valley and studied the security aspects of alternative channels and did an extensive research about artificial intelligence blockchain technology and published various papers about the security aspects of blockchain technology in comparison with the threats of all alternative distribution channels of banking. Uh, we wholeheartedly welcome you sir to handle this session. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, ma'am for the uh, invite and the introduction. Thank you so much. Let me share my screen. Okay, is it visible? Am I audible? Yes, sir. It's audible, but I was screen uh, not at visible. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, yeah, wonderful. Good afternoon to you. Uh, let me check once again. Yeah, everything is okay. Okay. Hereby welcome to the topic about uh, AI. Uh, AI applications in real world. Um, yes. Below Sorry, the. Sir. Sorry, sir. Yeah. Your PPT is not visible, sir. One minute. Let me share this again. Yeah, yeah, it's visible, sir. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah, very good afternoon once again. Um, respected uh, dignitaries and uh, faculty members in Periyar Maniamai um, University and uh, colleagues from various college universities who are participating on this uh, FDP program. So hope we are in the day six of the FDP. Uh, many of you are uh, attend the previous day sessions. Uh, thank you so much for all your participation and uh, thanks for your time in joining today's uh, session. I think we have around uh, 40, 44 participants. Uh, I assume most of the participants are from mobile phone. So uh, please uh, make yourself comfortable in uh, listening uh, the session. Uh, 
let's get into the arrangement Okay, so the AI, which is artificial intelligence, and uh, hope during the previous five day session you would have learned a lot about uh, uh, artificial intelligence and um, various aspects of uh, artificial intelligence. So I don't want to get into the basics. Instead, let us look at the topic given to me is on the. Uh, a application on today's world real time real time world so let me explain a bit about the applications and the disciplines in this slide actually this is not a new slide uh, uh, they formulated this way back in 2010 uh, this is what i see when i was searching for the source of this slide because it is an interesting uh, tree the ai tree the root are all the disciplines so there are so many uh, disciplines like for example computer science which is the basic and engineering management science robotics statistics biology linguistics sociology so every discipline can give some application for ai so this is what we understood See, actually, artificial intelligence is woven into the fabric of our everyday lives in a surprising number of ways. Let me give you a couple of examples, like when we start from the morning, the smart alarm clock uses AI to learn your sleep pattern and wake you up during a light sleep phase for a refreshed feeling. And in the morning, we usually see the weather forecast on the phone is likely generated by a machine learning model that again analyzes vast amount of data to predict the upcoming conditions for the day. Next comes commuting from our home to office. Most of us use uh, traffic navigation apps when we go to a new place. Of course, not to our daily commute to college or uh, office, but to whenever we go to a new place. We use a uh, Google map or some other map which use artificial intelligence to analyze some real time traffic and suggest the most efficient route. So this, this is a part and parcel of our day to day life. And in some cities, you might even be riding in an autonomous vehicle powered by AI. This is not very popular in most of the cities now, but of course, in few US um, cities, states, there are autonomous vehicles. And next is in our office and school and workplace that we use email which use artificial intelligence to identify and block unwanted messages, uh, spam filters, all these are uh, AI application. And some educational platforms, I hope most of the audience here are uh, academicians, uh, use various educational platforms which use AI powered tutoring system that can personalize the learning experience for students. And in the evening, when we come home, the entertainment, yes, the recommendation systems on streaming services use AI to suggest your movies or your uh, talk show, your favorite shows you might enjoy based on a watch history. The best example is YouTube. If you start watching one, video the algorithm beautif beautifully picks the next video and uh, line up for our view and many video games again today use ai to create realistic and challenging opponents for players and uh, some homes were already started using siri or alexa uh, to understand our voice commands and perform tasks like playing music or controlling home devices, switch on the AC, switch on the TV, switch on something like that. And, and in some cases there are security systems in advanced countries, they use facial recognition, which again uh, AI. So these are just few examples as AI technology continues to develop, we can even expect to see more innovative applications emerge in the real world. Any questions or can I move on to the next slide? Okay, 
so ai applications when we talk about uh, ai application artificial intelligence only these days there are so many advanced tools came in but this is not new so from this slide what we are seeing is google translate which was launched on 28 april 2006 so way back in 2006 the artificial intelligence came into existence this is what it mean and way back in 20 2011 google introduced the voice search and the siri again in around 2015 2016 they launched and all these applications or tools we keep using on our day to day life which is a real time application okay here i would like to introduce couple of uh, gentlemen who are actually professors uh, why i pulled this slide because most of the audience here are academicians and professors in various colleges universities so it's uh, definitely an inspiration to all of us uh, the father of godfather of ai who is geoffrey hinton he is a professor emeritus at the university of toronto actually he is the pioneer of artificial intelligence and he he keep doing lot of lot of research activities around ai for the last uh, couple of decades and now he is also vp at google and ion leto he is again a professor at new york university and he is vp at facebook and yoshua yoshua bengio is again a professor at university of montreal in canada and he is the owner of uh, very many algorithms uh, which is the basis for artificial intelligence so all these three professors contributed a lot to ai in fact they are more of uh, godfather uh, particularly geoffrey is called as a godfather to ai okay let me list up few industries when we talk about are a applications in today's real world uh, i just want to classify based on industry uh, you can see agriculture retail crm transportation smart city entertainment media healthcare and robotics so these are all various industries you may have a question why education and banking is on the other side because of the audience and the presenter <laughs> very simple reason uh so most of the audience here i presume are from the education background like faculties or professors lecturers from various universities and educational institution and as a presenter i am from banking uh, i am basically a banker turned uh, it consultant and running my own company in singapore now so we are into core banking uh, software so the world's number one core banking software which is Temino's T24, uh, almost 3,500 banks across the globe are using this particular uh, core banking system. Okay, uh, not to bore you with slides, uh, we inserted a video. Let's take five minutes to listen this video, which is about a game. So it's a story where a got importance. and uh, it's again a game let me play the video this is the world's most complex board game there are more possible moves in the game of go than there are atoms in the universe legend has it that in 2300 bce emperor yao devised it to teach his son discipline concentration and balance and over 4000 years later this ancient chinese game would signal the start of a new industrial age it was 2016 in seoul south korea as machines overtake human intelligence 
a breakthrough moment when the world champion of the ancient sport game Go takes out an AI program developed by Google. In countries where it's very popular, like China and Japan and, and, and South Korea, to them Go is not just a game, right? It's like how you learn strategy. It has It has an almost spiritual component. You know, if you talk to South Koreans, right, then Lee Seagal is the world's greatest Go player, is the national hero in South Korea. They were sure that Lee Seagal would beat AlphaGo hands down. Google's AlphaGo was a computer program that, starting with the rules of Go and a database of historical games, had been designed to teach itself. I was one of the commentators at the Lycée Dole games, and yes, it was watched by tens of millions of people. Throughout Southeast Asia, this was seen as a sports spectacle with national pride at stake. But much more was in play. This was the public unveiling of a form of artificial intelligence called deep learning that mimics the neural networks of the human brain. So what happens with machine learning and artificial intelligence, initially with AlphaGo, is that the machine is fed all kinds of Go games. And then it studies them, learns from them, and it figures out its own moves. And because it's an AI system, it's not just following instructions, it's figuring out its own instructions. It comes up with moves that humans haven't thought of before. So it studies games that humans have played, it knows the rules, and then it comes up with creative moves. Oh, that's a very, that's a very surprising move. I don't think it's a mistake. Game two, move 37. That move 37 was a move that humans could not fathom, but yet it ended up being brilliant and woke people up to say, wow, after thousands of years of playing, we never thought about making a move like that. Oh, he resigned. It looks like he, Lisa Dole was just resigned, actually. Yeah. yeah. In the end, the scientists watched their algorithms win four of the games. Lisa Dole took one. What happened with Go, first and foremost, was a huge victory for DeepMind and for AI, right? It wasn't that the computers beat the humans. It was that, you know, one type of intelligence beat another. Artificial intelligence had proven it could marshal a vast amount of data beyond anything any human could handle and use it to teach itself how to predict an outcome. The commercial implications were enormous. While AlphaGo is a, is a toy game, but its success and its um, uh, waking everyone up, I think, is, is going to be remembered as the um, um, pivotal moment where AI became mature and everybody jumped on the bandwagon. This is about the consequences of that defeat. How the AI algorithms are ushering in a new age of great potential and prosperity. But an age that will also deepen inequality, challenge democracy, and divide the world into two AI superpowers. Tonight, five stories about how artificial intelligence Okay, so in this video, uh, actually it is a documentary and this actually provoked the thinking or the way how AI is developed and it is overtaking human. So as they mentioned, uh, there are many consequences, many countries took bold steps towards AI. In the next slide, it's a very small video. We will see how the Singapore go Chinese government took some steps. Let me play this video. Announced the government's bold new plans to an audience of foreign diplomats. 
China would catch up with the U.S. in artificial intelligence by 2025 and lead the world by 2030. An intensified cooperation in frontier areas such as digital economy, artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, and quantum computing. Today, China leads the world in e-commerce. Announce the government's book. Okay, so this is the major step taken by Chinese government based on the games winning by the machine. It's it's more like our uh, chess game. Uh, any questions so far from the audience? Or any comments to add up? Okay, if not, uh, let me proceed. Uh, see, in the list of industries, we mentioned agriculture. So, agriculture is one of the area where artificial intelligence is contributing a lot. Like, number one is the precision farming and the crop monitoring. See, uh, when we in today's world, particularly, there are a lot of issues around the labor. Uh, labor shortage is a major concern in the agriculture industry. So, these drones and the new technologies which comes into agriculture is definitely a great help to the farmers. And of course, it utilizes A to analyze crop health, optimize irrigation and monitor field conditions for enhanced yielding. This is actually a gift to the farmers. But in the same time, farmers need to be educated to utilize the technology. So that, that downside is always there. But nowadays, farmers are catching up and there are so many uh, tiny, tiny SME companies helping the farmers in these areas. Uh, so number two is the supply chain optimization. Again, AI aids in demand for forecast, demand forecasting logistics optimization and uh, proper distribution reducing the wastage and cost because in agriculture this is again a big headache for farmers even we see in uh, india and tamil nadu lot of lot of paddy is getting wasted or um, the they were not able to sell properly whatever they produced they were not able to sell fully so due to this wastage and uh, logistics issues a will help in covering those and the third area is the safety and quality control again a with its lot of data and the rules it will predict it will predict and analyze about the food containment and the food safety on the through the supply chain. Let's move on to retail. See, actually, I keep very uh, minimum number of slides for these industries, but we are going to speak a lot about uh, education and banking, uh, banking in particular. Uh, because as a presenter, I am a banker and I can talk more about banking. For other industries, I am just highlighting how AI is ruling on these particular industries in a real-time situation. So, coming to retail, AI is helping in terms of inventory management and demand forecasting based on the footfalls in every retail outlet. And also, based on the buying behavior of a particular customer, they are offering personalized shopping experience also. And these two determine the supply chain. So how users are buying, what is the demand in the market, how to manage the inventory. Based on that, AI is helping to optimize the supply chain and the logistics around retail industry. Let us move on to the next industry, which is customer relationship management. CRM. Okay. So, improving customer engagement and experience. So, coming to CRM again, every company, every industry, uh, the biggest challenge is to retain their customer. Uh, 
so to understand the personalized need of the customer ai is helping in terms of recommendation and offering tailored products or services based on these individual preferences and past buying behaviors because most of our buying behavior are getting into uh, digital world now so wherever we go and buy things we give our mobile number and there is some customer uh, id or uh, reference id something they tag it up and uh, they are uh, tracking our past buying patterns and based on that they are offering their services and sentiment analysis and feedback so this is again you you ai is analyzing customer sentiments and the process feedback efficiently enable some proactive response to concerns and enhancing overall satisfaction of a customer so customer buying behavior is the most important uh, topic in terms of marketing where a algorithms forecast with with all these data because when we talk about ai ai data is the fuel so whenever we have more data the ai will work better so this is the uh, thumb rule for ai let us move on to the next industry which is transportation so artificial intelligence is again revolutionizing the transportation industry in terms of advancing the safety efficiency and automation so the most important uh, aspect is the autonomous vehicle because nowadays most of the cities started adapting autonomous vehicles we don't need any drivers so once you select your destination the vehicle automatically navigate and self driving cars and trucks are uh, reshaping the future of transportation and uh, the second aspect of transportation is the traffic management and optimization so again ai from the real time traffic monitoring congestion prediction and dynamic route optimization they reduce the travel time as well as fuel consumption so safety is also taken care and the third important aspect is the predictive maintenance see when comes to transportation there should not be any uh, stoppage or uh, the transport should not stuck in between so for that they are utilizing predictive maintenance with a algorithm to predict and prevent equipment failures so through regular servicing and changing the accessories or the spare parts the bringing down the downtime and enhancing safety in the transportation system in china actually there is a company called memento autonomous vehicles they are actually manufacturing autonomous self driving cars in china and the ceo card zhu dong he is telling that machine will definitely surpass the human driver in the end let us see a quick and short video on the autonomous vehicle the 33 year old ceo of a new startup called momenta this is a ring road around beijing the car is driving itself this is uh, another cutting another cutting uh, another cutting yeah yeah Chao has no doubt about the inevitability of autonomous vehicles. Just like uh, the AlphaGo can beat the human player in in Go, I think uh, the machine will definitely surpass the human driver in the end. Recently, there have been cautions about how soon autonomous vehicles will be deployed. But Chao and his team are confident. They're in for the long haul. U.S. will be the first to deploy, but China may be the first to popularize. Uh, it's 50-50 right now. U.S. is ahead in technology. China has a larger market, and the Chinese government is helping with infrastructure efforts. For example, building a new city the size of Chicago with autonomous driving enabled, and also a new highway that has sensors built in to help autonomous vehicle be safer. Their early investors included Mercedes-Benz. 
I feel very lucky and、uh, very inspiring and very excited that we're living in this era. Yeah, this is about autonomous vehicles.、Uh, this is about the story in China about the autonomous vehicle and、um, the AI inclusion. Coming to United States of America, we have a gentleman called Alex Rodriguez, and he is in a mission to manufacture self-drive trucks. See, actually, in the transportation industry. There is a major shortage for truck drivers. Uh, that too, moving uh, goods from big major cities to other major cities. For example, in India, transporting goods from Chennai to Coimbatore or Chennai to Mumbai, Delhi, like places, the air shipment is very costly. So by road, there are a lot of movements happening. Similarly, in the US. There, there are a lot of highways where there are a lot of lot of、uh, trucks moving around, and what they see is there are so many crashes happening because of the drivers. So this gentleman Alex spoke to the regulators to re- to bring down zero highway death, which is possible only using self driving. And as per the statistics, more than ninety percent of the crashes have a human driver as the cause. I think it is the same、uh, as the case in India also. For that matter, any country. So again, we are having a short video about、uh, this gentleman. Another two minutes. Let me play the video. New age. Replace a human driver. This is the company's CEO, 24-year-old Alex Rodriguez. The more things we build successfully, the less people ask questions about how old you are when you have working trucks. This is what he's built. Commercial goods are being driven from California to Arizona on Interstate 10. There is a driver in the cab, but he's not driving. It's a path set by a CEO with an unusual CV. Are we ready, Henry? <laughs> the aim is to score these bucks in the scoring area. So I I did competitive robotics starting when I was eleven, and I took it very very seriously. To to give you a sense, I won the robotics world championships the first time when I was thirteen. Been to worlds seven times between the ages of thirteen and twenty ish. I eventually founded a team. Did a lot of work at a very high competitive level. Things looking pretty good. This was a prototype of sorts, from which he has built his multi-million-dollar company. I hadn't built a robot in a while. Wanted to get back to it, and felt that this was by far the most exciting piece of robotics technology that was up and coming. A lot of people told us we wouldn't be able to build it,、uh, but knew roughly the techniques that you would use. And I was pretty confident that if you put them together, you would get something that worked. Took the summer off, built in my parents' garage a golf cart that could drive itself. That golf cart got the attention of Silicon Valley, and the first of several rounds of venture capital. He formed a team, and then decided the business opportunity was in self-driving trucks. He says there's also a human benefit. If we can build a truck that's ten times safer than a human driver,、uh, then. Not much else actually matters. When we talk to regulators, especially,、uh, everyone agrees that the only way that we're going to get to zero highway deaths, which is everyone's objective, is to use self-driving. And so,、uh, I'm sure you've heard the statistic: more than 90% of all crashes、uh, have a human driver as the cause.、And、so, if you want to solve traffic fatalities, which, in my opinion, are the single biggest tragedy that happens year after year in the United States. This is the only solution. It's an ambitious goal, but only possible because of the recent breakthroughs in deep. Yeah. Then how how is it possible?、Uh, we need to analyze, and this is where AI 
and the machine learning and deep learning coming into the picture and we are going to introduce no the way. the professor who is behind in in upcoming slides okay so let us look at the application of ai in other areas like uh, smart cities nowadays there are so many new smart cities are coming in various countries and uh, places so the major uh, points would be like traffic flow optimization energy consumption and waste management when they build a new smart city for which ai is contributing a lot of lot of areas and in the new smart cities uh, there are lot of computer vision cvs installed to identify people to identify vehicle and even counting the people crossing the road as as you see in this picture so how is it possible let me play another video for just 2 minutes particularly in the ability to see and understand scenes a lot of people don't know this but it's remarkably hard for computers until very very recently to do even the most basic visual tasks like seeing a picture of a person and knowing that it's a person and we've made gigantic strides with artificial intelligence in being able to see and understanding tasks and that's obviously fundamental to being able to understand the world around you with the sensors that that you have available That's now possible because of the algorithms written by Yashua Bengio and a small group of scientists. There are many aspects of the world which we can't explain with words. And that part of our knowledge is actually probably the majority of it. It's so like like the stuff we can communicate verbally is the tip of the iceberg. And so to get at the bottom of the iceberg, the solution was the computers have to acquire that knowledge by themselves from data from examples just like children learn most not from their teachers but from interacting with the world and playing around and and trying things and seeing what works and what doesn't work this is an early demonstration in 2013 deep mind scientists set a machine learning program yeah most of us would have played this game actually this game was cracked so easily by uh, by machine by computer so that was the point on that slide uh, see again the next topic is about uh, facial uh, recognition so what is important about the facial recognition is that uh, in china the chinese government and some private companies have been building a national database which the government wants to integrate all these individual behaviors or corporation records into some kind of metrics and compute out a single number or a set of numbers associated with an individual citizen and using that to implement an incentive or punishment system as as kind of a high social credit number can be rewarded with discounts on bus fare or travel ban Uh, see actually what they are trying here is uh, counting every citizen and their every movement into an incentive or a punishment so as a citizen you will be forced to be responsible it, it is very powerful but it is extremely troublesome in terms of civil liberty this is another issue in china now and there is a company called megwi the vice president is on the top is uh, who when how he is telling that in less than 100 milliseconds so in just 0.1 second they will be able to recognize you even on a mobile phone which means they are building the database and they are building the technology to identify a person very quickly so it is if the database is centralized the artificial intelligence can easily track people wherever they go see because uh, in singapore uh, actually why singapore is safe compared to any other country why singapore is safe is the simple reason it's a very small island uh, here in singapore what we do the moment you enter the airport there will be an id allocated to you if you are a foreigner there is something called a fin number foreign identification number 
so based on that number they will be issuing uh, mobile sim card your uh, residence or your hotel accommodation and your travel card everything will be tagged to this particular id if it is a citizen there is a different number if it is a foreign national there is a set different number but the government is able to monitor each and every individual who is roaming around the island within singapore they will be easily able to track because your mobile number is linked to the id your transport card is linked to the id and your residence or accommodation wherever you stay is linked to the id so the country is very safer similarly china government is also trying with artificial intelligence so this is why they are actually investing a lot of uh, resources on the facial recognition part uh, any questions any suggestion feedback anything from the audience just to take a pause okay i trust you are all with me let me move on to the entertainment and media part of ai so as as i initially explained about the entertainment system what we have at home they come with uh, recommendations you know the youtube is the best example and there are any other system even if you take netflix or amazon prime or any other uh, application in the entertainment system they enhances user experience by suggesting personalized content based on your viewing history and uh, creative content generation again based on your previous uh, history and the predictive analysis for audience behavior so your preferences behavior pattern and enabling tar targeted content creation and marketing strategies so it is not that somebody is taking a movie on his own preference no it all depends on the data see like for example if 1 million users are watching a horror movie the director will invest his money on a horror movie if 5 million users are watching a comedy movie the producer or the investor will invest his money on a comedy movie so ai is driving the content creation strategy and marketing strategy all together so this is a powerful implication of ai in entertainment and media let's move on to healthcare yeah in healthcare there are tremendous benefits again let me explain you with uh, one example uh, before that let let us look at the high level uh, benefits predictive analysis which will help in enhance the patient outcomes and personalized treatment plan because every every uh, individual is unique and they are every treatment should be unique so personalized treatment will reduce healthcare cost and diagnostic imaging which helps early disease detection that, that is why we used to go for uh, every month a monster health checkup to see whether there is any change in uh, any particular organ and drug discovery again this is for the medicines which give improved patient outcomes okay so ai is uh, playing a vital role in terms of uh, segmenting the human organs or breast cancer cell diagnosis or a brain tumor segmentation in in all these areas Uh, i'm having a small video again for next 3 minutes which talks about the uh, ai involvement in medicine let me play the video i think it's for 3 minutes it's going to change the face of breast cancer right now 40000 women in the us alone die from breast cancer every single year dr connie lehman is head of the breast imaging center at massachusetts general hospital in boston We become so complacent about it. We almost don't think it can really be changed. We we somehow think we should put all of our energy into chemotherapies to save women with metastatic breast cancer and yet you know when we find it early we cure it and we cure it without having the ravages to the body when we diagnose it late. 
this shows the progression of a small, small spot from one year to the next, and then to the diagnosis of the small cancer here. This is what happened when a woman who had been diagnosed with breast cancer started to ask questions about why it couldn't have been diagnosed earlier. Really brings a lot of anxiety and you're asking the questions, you know, am I going to survive? What's going to happen to my son? And I start asking other questions. She was used to asking questions. At MIT's artificial intelligence lab, Professor Regina Barzilay uses deep learning to teach the computer to understand language, as well as read text and data. I was really surprised at the very basic question that I asked my physicians, which were really excellent physicians here at MGH. They couldn't give me answers that I was looking for. She was convinced that if you analyze enough data, from mammograms to diagnostic notes, the computer could predict early stage conditions. If we fast forward from 2012 to 13 to 2014, we then see when Regina was diagnosed because of this spot on her mammogram. Is it possible with more elegant computer applications that we might have identified this spot the year before or even back here? So those are standard prediction problems in machine learning. There is not, nothing special about them. And to my big surprise, none of the technologies that we are developing at MIT, even in the most simple form, doesn't penetrate the hospital. So Regina and Connie began the slow process of getting access to thousands of mammograms and records from MGH's breast imaging program. So our first foray was just to take all of the patients we had at MGH during a period of time who had had breast surgery for a certain type of high-risk lesion. And uh, we found that most of them didn't really need the surgery. They didn't have cancer, but about 10% did have cancer. With Regina's techniques in deep learning and machine learning, we were able to predict the women that truly needed the surgery and separate out those that really could avoid the unnecessary surgery. What machine can do, it can take hundreds of thousands of images where the outcome is known and blend based on how, you know, pixels are distributed. What are the very unique patterns that correlate highly with future occurrence of the disease? So instead of using human capacity to kind of recognize pattern, formalize pattern, which is inherently limited by our cognitive capacity and how much we can see and remember, we're providing machine with a lot of data and make it learn this prediction. So we are using technology not only to be better at assessing the breast density, but to get more to the point of what we're trying to predict. Does this woman have a cancer now? And will she develop a cancer in five years? And that's again where the artificial intelligence, machine and deep learning can really help us and our patients. Yeah, the point is um, from the discussion. So the most of them didn't really need the surgery, but they didn't have cancer. About only 10% have cancer. And with deep learning and machine learning techniques, they were able to predict the woman that truly needed the surgery and separate out those that really could avoid the unnecessary surgery. Actually, this is the problem in medical industry now. See, diagnosis is the key. And if we were able to diagnose whether they need a surgery or not, that itself is a big, big milestone. So what they are telling is we are using technology to find does this woman have a cancer now? If not, will she develop a cancer in five years down the line? That itself is a good uh, contribution to the particular industry. So here they are explaining what machines can do. It can take hundreds of thousands of images where the outcome is known and learned based on how the pixels are distributed, what are the unique patterns that correlate highly with the future occurrence of the disease. 
So this is a very big uh, contribution to the medical industry to identify the upcoming disease or the future occurrence of a particular disease. It, it will be definitely beneficial to the human society from artificial intelligence and, and they are actually using it for a good cause. Next, let's move on to the robotics. Yeah, nowadays there are a lot of, lot of robots came into existence. Uh, the very simple application in most of the homes now is the robo vacuum cleaner because of uh, house made or the maintenance people problem, labor issue again. So the robots doing a wonderful job and in most of the hotels we can see the waiter or the server is, is robots. So these two are very common applications what we see in Singapore and there are upcoming or emerging applications using robotics like a drone delivery or um, many many other new advanced uh, technologies are still in uh, what to say research and development but they will definitely contribute a lot in the near future uh, this gentleman mike kiko is uh, president and ceo of uh, fanuk robotics a Japanese robot manufacturing company in America. Uh, what he is telling is they are actually utilizing artificial intelligence to make the robots easier to use and be able to handle a broader spectrum of opportunities. So artificial intelligence is helping even making robots. We are, we are, it is not like uh, robots are using artificial intelligence, it's either way around. Let us move on to the next, which is education. Yeah, uh, for the faculties here. How artificial intelligence will help education? So there are three key areas. One is adaptive learning platform. So AI powered platforms tailor learning experience to individual student needs. Because we are aware not all the students are same like others in a classroom. Out of 30, 10 may be brilliant, 10 may be average, and the other 10 may be less average. But the curriculum or the, the academic pattern, what we follow is uniform for all the 30 in a classroom. But A can bring some tailor-made, uh, personalized learning for the students. And the next is student performance analysis. Again, as I mentioned earlier, data is the fuel for AI. So AI analyzes students' data to identify their strengths, weakness and personalized improvement strategies so that they can improve on their key strength. And third is the administrative automation. We are aware that most of the institutions were uh, using uh, ERPs or automation tools to streamline the administrative tasks such as attendance, grading, scheduling and resource allocation, all this stuff. Individualized learning path as we discussed in the previous slide, based on the particular student's learning pattern the content and the pace will be modified and improved learning outcomes. Because of this personalized learning, the outcomes are tremendous. The students will be happy and they perform better, which gives uh, the students engagement, enhanced student engagement. Yeah, in the next slide, we are uh, discussing about the data driven education which helps in the strategic planning support curriculum development assistance and student intervention in science see there are actually there are also some downside of uh, implementing ai let us look at the challenges in implementing ai in education there are ethical concerns whether ai usage in educator aligns with ethical standards and values because when we talk about a it's all about data see we, we use so much of data which may be personal data 
uh, then it is ethical or not so that is a concern and uh, second is the date of privacy this also concern in countries like us protecting student data and privacy whether uh, it, it it is okay to share with a driven educational system or not then digital divide addressing the gap in access to ai technology among students and schools uh, so many countries like africa and other countries they don't have the basic infrastructure even they don't reach 1 gb of data see in india we are talking about 4g 5g in developed countries there are 5g network but uh, there are so many backward countries they don't have access to the particular digital even even in the countries there are remote areas where they don't have access based on the location and next is the integration with existing system yeah most of the educational institutions have some existing infrastructure they may have some server they may have some cloud data some cloud storage so whether this ai will seamlessly integrate with that particular existing infrastructure this is another downside of implementing ai and training the teachers which is that last topic providing educators with the necessary skills to leverage ai in in teaching i think this is what the motto or the objective of this particular faculty development program thank you so much for periyar maniam institute to incorporating and addressing this challenge of implementing a in the field of education and we all will have a question because when we talk about a in many forums the first question will ai replace me the question is common across all industries mm, we we just saw a couple of uh, examples like truck drivers whether truck drivers are not needed in next 5 years 10 years and coming to programming in computer science people are telling ai will do all the programming there is chat gpt there is gemini they will do they will write codes we don't need developers we don't need coders similarly coming to education whether teachers will exist in future it this will be a common question among particularly all faculties or people in education system but the conclusion while a has the potential to transform education and support teachers in various ways it is unlikely to completely replace the vital role that teachers play in fostering holistic learning social interaction and emotional well being in students so don't worry a cannot replace faculties a cannot replace the complete teaching ecosystem it's not possible but of course it will help support and contribute to have a balanced approach which will we need to leverage a strengths while valuing human expertise and empathy is key to advancing education in the digital age this is the situation let's move on to the next industry the last one which is banking banking artificial intelligence in banking and finance see there are three major uh, uh, areas where i classify this as uh, very useful artificial intelligence will be useful so number one fraud detection and prevention as a typical bank user among this uh, audience maybe few would have uh, had some bad experience or at any any maybe the neighbor maybe one of your friend who may fall prey to uh this fraud there are there are so many so many things are happening so many uh wrong transactions or uh, uh, i i don't know how to explain this but people lost money end of day due to some fraud activity in uh, account actually my my phd thesis is around this particular topic uh, which is on the security aspects of alternative distribution channel because as i mentioned earlier i am basically in the banking industry i am basically a banker and now into the it stream of banking 
we we are managing or installing the core banking system in various banks across the globe i myself traveled around uh, 13 countries uh, right from united states of america uk australia to very many gulf countries we are implementing uh, core banking system so within the core banking system there are less chances of this fraud or the malpractice uh, to happen but there is a possibility like spammers or the hackers can can breach the network through the alternative distribution channels when we say alternative distributive channels sorry okay so when i say artificial intelligence sorry you want to say something okay i think it's uh, somebody mistakenly unmuted okay so coming back to the fraud detection and prevention uh, so my topic was on the alternative distribution channels when we say alternative distribution channel which means apart from the core banking system there are so many distribution channels from the bank like internet banking mobile banking phone banking atm network all these comes under the alternative distribution channels of bank so the fraud or the malpractice or the misuse is happening only in the alternative distribution channels what we call is a interface so all these channels will talk to the core banking system to perform a transaction for example if you are inserting your card into a atm machine what is happening is the data from your atm card is communicating with the switch the switch in turn communicate with the core banking system of that particular bank for example if you are using your icic bank card in an icic bank atm so the card will talk to the switch and the switch will talk to the core banking system in icic bank all this is happening within 10 seconds and they will show you the balance and you can withdraw the money so the moment you withdraw the money what is happening behind the screen is your money is debiting from your icic bank account it is coming to the atm switch and it is coming to that particular atm where you inserted your card and this particular machine is dispensing the cash so there are chances to hammer this network uh, hackers can 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 uh, breach this particular network and do some fraud similarly internet banking there are chances where some uh, hackers could uh, hack the internet connection and stole some data based on that only this fraud are happening so artificial intelligence will help in detecting those fraud connectivity or the breach easily and can prevent next comes the algorithmic trading so when we talk about the trading it is about the share trading there are uh, various types of share trading the most popular one is the intraday people book some buy some shares in the morning sell in the evening they make some profit or make loss so algorithmic trading is a kind of computer program which again use data on the previous transactions and the trend and the history so they will do some prediction and they book a lot of transactions so quickly which humans cannot do <laughs> Okay. So next comes the customer service chatbots. 
so customer service chatbots we can see there are a lot of chatbots in many bank applications if you see icic bank app there is something called ipad in hdfc mobile banking app there is something called um, they give different different names for the customer service chatbots and these chatbots are quick very responsive if you ask a question they will reply immediately it is based on the uh, data which they have already okay let me move on to the next slide this is about um, algorithmic trading called automated trading uses a computer program that follows a defined set of instructions algorithm to place a trade the trade in theory can generate profits at a speed and frequency that is impossible for a human trader and again uh, on the security side the machine learning models can analyze device specific information like device model operating system ip address to create a unique fingerprint for each user this helps detect fraudulent activities such as account takeovers or multiple accounts that are linked to a single device all these can be avoided using artificial intelligence and next is there is a company called smart finance in china actually what they are doing is uh, it's a loan application even in india we have lot of mobile uh, apps which give uh, finance meaning loans quickly he, he is telling in 8 seconds the bank the bank can process a loan application within which the algorithm has accessed around 5000 personal features from all your data A as we discussed in the early slides of this presentation there are there are lot of data which is being created or collected as a central repository so the more the data better the ai works means the deep learning algorithm can quickly predict behaviors like the credit worthiness which is the key the credit worthiness of someone who applies for a loan and the third interesting top point which he talks about is the battery of the mobile see if you if your mobile battery is full say like greater than 80% the chances of getting your loan is more if your mobile battery is less than say like 20% or 30% they are rejecting the loan application so this is what he mean the battery of the mobile is also related to delinquency rate he is an investment banker and uh, he he is explaining about artificial intelligence that every company is looking at all of the disruptive technologies could be robotics or drones or blockchain whatever it is every companies using everything that's developed everything that's disruptive but how do i apply that to my business to make myself more efficient and what efficiency means is mostly how do i do this with fewer workers i think we talked about it in couple of slides labor is a major concern in many 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 areas not only agriculture not only truck driving in many places the labor or workers is is a major problem so companies started using technologies to perform a perform a task with fewer workers this is a very uh, latest uh, publication just 2 days before what gen ai can do for finance in the coming years there is a link with this uh, i can uh, walk through this so the compliance activities portfolio management all these activities can be handled with the help of ai so compliance activities in the sense there were traditional methods which are falling behind in the race against sophisticated money laundering schemes causing compliance cost to skyrocket whereas gen ai promises a revolution by analyzing patterns in customer behavior 
to pinpoint anomalies indicating fraudulent activities. For example, HSBC Bank has implemented AI to sift through millions of transactions identifying suspicious patterns undetectable by humans. With the right data, Gen AI could significantly enhance our ability to detect fraud and complex money laundering activities. And about portfolio management, again, Gen AI is poised to transform portfolio management by issuing trading recommendation, a task currently regulated by legal authorities. It can facilitate the creation of highly personalized investment portfolio by analyzing extensive financial data and predicting market trends. For example, JP Morgan Chase uses machine learning to dissect trading patterns and offer tailored trading advice, markedly improving client services and investment results. Uh, likewise, AI is helping in various aspects of investment banking and uh, the bank. The next slide, this is actually uh, our own project within iGen, what we are developing is we are developing a product uh, called iNeo Bank. You can even go through this website iNeoBank.com. Uh, this is our product website which is still under construction. We are developing the uh, product because, as I mentioned earlier, I was part of this Temino's Transact T24 team for the last 13 years and almost for the last six seven years. This is the world's number one core banking system and our project is to help regulators number one when I say regulators the central banks like reserve bank in India and the monetary authority of Singapore, Singapore in Singapore. So these are the regulators for banks. See usually when we develop a product for a bank we need to approach the regulator of the bank so that we can sell the product easy. This is how Temino's uh, transact was sold to almost 3500 banks across the globe. Whenever they enter a new country, for example, when they enter Africa, they first went to Central Bank of Kenya and implement the software to the Central Bank. So the Central Bank will recommend the system to other banks. Similarly in Singapore, similarly in all other countries, wherever they enter a new market, they talk to the regulator and with the recommendation of a regulator, the selling of the product will be much easier. So our objective is to help regulators and help financial institutions, which are banks basically and ultimately customers of the bank, which are users like you and me. So how we can help using artificial intelligence, regulators can easily see whether the bank the, the bank the performance of the bank is good or bad for example in india in recent days you would have uh, heard i think the latest acquisition was lakme vilas bank by dbs development bank of singapore so you can see now all the lakme vilas bank were uh, rebranded or renamed as dbs in india DBS is a development bank in Singapore, Singapore based bank which bought or acquired this Lakme Villas bank which was about to go bankrupt. They were in losses so DBS invested and acquired the bank. So this kind of information for regulators will help them with proper insights to help this particular banks to either outcome or to go into negotiation with some good banks for merger and acquisition. So this way we can help the regulators with the existing data within the core banking system. Number two, when it comes to financial institution, banks are interested in launching new new products for their customers like you and me. For example, I am using a current account, I am running a company in Singapore and I have a company in Dubai, I have a company in India. So we have multiple entities, multiple current accounts. So banks are interested in retaining me and see how they can retain me as a customer and where I can do a lot of transaction with this particular bank. Similarly, for uh, 
yeah let's take uh, example of the audience who are working in various universities and uh, colleges so you will probably have a salary account and the bank will give some better benefits to these salary account holders for example a personal loan with a lesser interest compared to other uh, bank interest so these these are some new product ideas the banks can launch new new products with the data what they have within the core banking system so we are we are planning to we are actually working on a product which can help banks to give detailed inputs about the existing customers uh, in terms of uh, launching new products in terms of alarming the management about a loan which is going to be a non performing asset because npa is the biggest headache for banks people who borrow money as loans they need to repay on time which is the key for a bank but when when they didn't pay on time so the bank it's a problem to the bank so the bank will not be able to survive and they need to take appropriate steps for recovery so this is a pain point of uh, of most of the banks and we are our algorithm is going to help these banks how they can approach these uh, loan holders or uh, people who borrow money from bank to recover or collect the money and number 3 for customers of the bank which is ultimately you and me for example one of the uh, user or one of the customer wanted to know whether they received a refund for a cancelled order in amazon which he placed couple of months before because we usually do right we place some order in an online uh, shopping mall like uh, amazon or flipkart there are so many online shopping websites so we want to know whether this particular uh, cancelled order whether i received the credit or not it is difficult for you to go back and check the statement every month every month month on month it will be difficult so ai can easily help you if you say that particular transaction amount ai will help when did you place the order and when did you cancel and what was the refund amount because in some cases the refund amount will not be the same as you place the order for example you would have ordered for say like 1200 rupees but the refund may be 1120 or 1100 after some deduction or some charges but ai can easily track with inside the data of your uh, particular account in in this range for example 3 4 months or even one year this can give you some magical results within couple of minutes or seconds this is the power of ai and our team is actually working on this wonderful product we are which we are planning to launch in couple of months as i mentioned earlier there are again some downside or challenges in implementing ai in banks see the number one the data privacy concern see because we banks need to ensure compliance with data privacy and protecting customer information that's that's a big challenge and the second challenge is the regulatory compliance as i mentioned in every country there are regulators who usually control the banks so there will be strict financial regulation and legal requirement and the banks need to adhere to the expectation of the regulatory compliance provided by the regulator for example in india which is reserve bank of india the next the biggest challenge is again skilled ai professional this is again a challenge to acquire and retain talent with expertise in artificial intelligence actually this is a growing uh, demand so this is why we see lot of lot of new colleges are coming up with artificial intelligence as a course and even uh, students are uh, selecting this particular course largely okay 
to summarize i have two more slides this is another professor uh, swashan sa subo she is a professor emerita in harvard business school actually she talked more about the a actually she wrote a book called in the age of the smart machine and now she is working on a new book called surveillance capitalism so what surveillance capitalism claims is uh, your private human experience and she is highlighting this private human experience is claimed as free source of raw material fabricated into predictions of human behavior obviously it turns out that there are lot of lot of businesses that really want to know what we will do now soon or later actually we were thinking that we are all using social media but it, it didn't occur to us that social media was actually using us so this is a statement we thought that we are searching google we had no idea that google was searching us there was a famous uh, incident with facebook which is called uh, cambridge analytica many of you were heard already if not uh, please go back and uh, refer what is cambridge analytica because i don't have time to cover that because that itself is a separate topic which will run for an hour after cambridge analytica see actually this is again um, kate is uh, was a professor now a co-founder of ai now institute she is telling we have learned our lesson and that everything will be much better after cambridge analytica but i am afraid the opposite is true because in some ways cambridge analytica was using tools that were 10 years old it was really in some way old school first wave data science but now what we are looking at with the current tools and machine learning there is lot of ability for manipulation both in terms of elections opinions and more broadly how information travels there is a much bigger problem certainly much more serious than what we faced with cambridge analytica so this is the view of uh, kate crawford and we have another view from yoshua who is the man behind ai from university of montreal he is again a professor so he is telling that ais are tools and they will serve the people who control the tools so this is more important if the people's interest go against the value of democracy then democracy is in danger which means ai should be used for good cause it will give good result but if it is used for a bad cause it will be uncontrollable so that's the conclusion and it is alarming of course there are so many challenges and downside of ai and and it is the responsibility of society as a collective effort we need to use ui for a good cause so let us empower real world applications and embrace the potential of ai to drive innovation and uh, transformation across industries thank you so much for all your time thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity for me to talk about ai and let me share these uh, couple of references in the chat or over an email uh, so that you can go through the uh, references or the documentary full movie for more information <coughs> and in fact one last information about mo uh, most of you might know about mo who is mo he was ex google actually he wrote a book called uh, scary smart we always love smartness people when people are smart we say yeah absolute he is a smart guy but sometimes smart is scary this is what most concern again thank you so much for all your time any feedback or any questions we can we can get into questions i am ready to take questions on
Any question from audience? Dear participants, this is the time for you. If you have any queries, you are requested to ask now. Bala Subramaniam sir, thank you so much. Through chat box. Little intro about Cambridge analysis, please. Analytics, please. Okay. See. Uh, okay. Let me give you a little intro about Cambridge Analytica. Uh, actually, it is about using our personal data. I think we all heard about it and read about it. In fact, that was the dispute. Many people didn't want to use WhatsApp in between uh, because uh, there were uh, news that. WhatsApp is sharing all our uh, information to various companies for marketing purpose like that. So this was actually done by Facebook. This is the case and the, the CEO of uh, Facebook appeared in front of a very big audience and he uh, accepted. Yes, we did that. So that was the scary part. So all our private information or whatever we upload in Facebook, they are using that for some commercial purpose for companies. See, because when you search, um, for example, if you are looking for uh, accommodation or room in a certain city, there will be a lot of recommendations coming uh, for that. So it is all about marketing. And, and even I think uh, Google made a lot of money out of uh, selling personal data that that is about uh, cambridge analytica i think i answered uh, soumya madam thank you okay ma'am thank you Let me share the... Sir, can please provide any detail about sentimental analysis? Uh, okay. Okay, so these are the references which I used uh, so that you can go through the YouTube videos. See, sentimental analysis is more like uh, people we celebrate birthdays, anniversaries. Uh, most of them are emotional on, on that particular part, right? Uh, see, even if you take my case, wherever I am, I used to come back to my uh, to celebrate my daughter's birthday or my wife's birthday or my wedding anniversary with my family. So it's a kind of sentiment and emotional. Of, of a particular user. So for a corporate or for a company who want to sell something, my emotional is more important. Uh, even now you can see when you go to a textile shop or any shop for that matter, they will attract the kids first. And if the kid asks something, we will never say no. This is a normal tendency. And, and they capitalize that. The you can you can see some examples like uh, for us a shirt is cost 500 rupees but even for the kid it's more expensive than that but still we buy. It it, it is actually a part of uh, sentiment analysis like capturing all the 
date of like your wedding anniversary date of birth and and uh, wishing you with a gift coupon or some promotion promo code will will make you buy something <laughs> end of day we are all buyers for the corporates Is it worth to research in crypto algorithm? Yes, definitely. See, crypto. Uh, I I would rather say rather than crypto algorithm, get into blockchain. See, because crypto is the source for currency, crypto currencies, which is an product of uh, blockchain. So uh, better to analyze or research more into the. blockchain technology because blockchain technology is common for all industry even our uh, uh, the land registering authority registered of registration officers in india can get into blockchain because of the immutability the the beauty of uh, blockchain is immutability nobody can break any data in between so that's the beauty that's blockchain in nutshell so any record keeping agency uh, whether it is uh, registration of land or vehicle registration or um, there are so many other record keeping agencies uh, they will transform to blockchain in near future for the simple reason the data is valid which is 100% perfect that nobody can immute for example if a property is transferring from 1 to 10 people all the 10 people will be listed in that uh, record which we call it as encumbrance certificate ec in india but uh, there are chances to hide certain information even within the ec nowadays with this present technology but when when artificial intelligence or the blockchain technology come into existence those pro- probability is less nobody can immute nobody can delete one record in between do you think ai is science or technology see for me it is technology <laughs> maybe i am wrong but in my personal view it is uh, technology because uh, it is not science when we say science it will be natural if you ask me natural intelligence which is science when it is artificial it is not natural it, it is quite artificial right so artificial is a technology and and it was written by algorithms algo trading yes it is very much efficient but again there are chances of uh, losses algo trading is a pattern or a trading which do very fast beyond human capacity as we talked earlier uh, it will do see for example a manual transaction can do 100 transaction or 200 transaction in a day but algo can do a lot more number of transactions and uh, it will be efficient definitely and the profitability we cannot guarantee Uh, it depends on the data depends on the data which is fed into the system so if the algorithm works properly and if it has enough data there are chances to get more profits and no losses actually i would recall uh, a hindi movie i don't remember the title of the movie but it is amitabh uh, amitabh bachan movie amitabh is actually a mathematics professor in a college and the students took him for gambling and every time they go they win they win and in fact they sweep the entire gambling market one day so they all get caught then only they will come to know this is a professor mathematics professor so similarly uh, it it will be efficient definitely Thank you, Martin, sir.
so we have 60 participants now thank you so much for all your time i can take even more questions uh, i think we do have time also coordinator ma'am uh, up to what time can okay. Yeah, uh, trend after deep learning technologies. There is a question from Soumya ma'am again. Mm, see, deep learning, I'm not sure what will be beyond deep learning. Because deep learning is the deepest, I believe. <laughs> after that, maybe they'll come up with some other terminology or something else because I think uh, deep learning and machine learning so both are parallel or uh, machine learning came first and deep learning came second even I don't know the origin we need to do some research maybe you can check uh, which comes first whether machine learning or deep learning if machine learning was first then yes in trending first machine learning and then deep learning and maybe in future something else will come But I don't have an answer. Sorry. Ah, M one followed by D L. Okay. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, sir. I hope uh, there is no other queries. Shall we wind up, sir? Or yeah. Thank you, yes. thank you so much for the wonderful opportunity. Uh, I wish uh, each and every one here as the audience uh, very best uh, for your. Uh, uh, career and uh, yeah learn learn new concepts and uh, teach new concepts to the next generation which is more important you are all uh, in a noble profession of building our next generation of uh, engineers or scientists or technologists whatever it is it's all in your hands so thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity again Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much, sir, for your uh, very informative and very innovative presentation. Thank you. On behalf of me, Mr. My sincere thanks for your uh, exceptional presentation in this faculty development program, sir. Thanks a lot for uh, sharing our knowledge and making our today's session as a grand success, sir. We Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks a Thank lot. Thank you. Bye. Sir, kindly connect with us for the well decree, sir. It's my kind of obligation. Yeah, sure. I'll be there. Yeah. Thank you. So now it is the time to, for the valedictory. As all good things come to an end in life, yes, this is the end of the day of our international level faculty development program on A for educators, a six days faculty development journey. As a part of this valedictory, valedictory address is our first agenda. So if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more and become more, you are a leader. Yes, it's my great privilege and honor to welcome our esteemed Dean Ma'am, Dr. M. Sharmila Behem, Dean Faculty of Computer Science and Engineering, Periyar Manima Institute of Science and Technology, to give the valedictory address. I welcome you, Ma'am. Thank you, thank you, Anisha, Ma'am. Uh, am I audible, Ma'am? Ah, yes, Ma'am, it's audible, Ma'am. Uh, thank you, Ma'am. Uh, good evening to one and all here. Uh, I am Dr. Sharmila, Dean of Faculty of Computing Sciences and Engineering. Mm, and I, first of all, my heartiest congratulations to the Department of uh, Software Engineering, head of the Department, Dr. Magesh Kumar sir, and especially the coordinators, Anusha Madam and Saranya Madam, for organizing such a wonderful 
virtual uh, faculty development program on artificial intelligence for educators this six days a uh, faculty development journey will brings a lot of uh, uh, new opportunities to the faculty members i would like to first uh, congratulate and give my appreciation to the coordinators of software engineering department and the convener uh, head of the department of software engineering and also the uh, title itself the a for educators is a current need uh, current demand so our software engineering is mainly focused towards a unique nature so they have uh, identified the topic correctly and also i would like to uh, at this juncture i would like to thank uh, every resource person who spend their valuable time here uh, dr silvakumar sir from asia pacific university of technology malaysia and day two was covered by thirumurugan shanmugam sir from department of it um, from oman and also day three by rama parvati madam uh, she is from bit chennai and also the fourth the fourth day covered by our um, dr appa walis balamurugan from our department of computer science and engineering p mr periyar mani university and then fifth day is covered by our navin kumar sir uh, who is from chennai and uh, uh, a applications in real world today vijay sir ceo and founder of igen services and solutions singapore so once again uh, as a dean faculty of computing sciences and engineering i would like to thank each and every resource person who spend their valuable time and uh, give their uh, suggestions and inputs to carry out the entire faculty members in the a for educators uh, once again i appreciate and my heartiest congratulations to the department and uh, thank you each and every one the participants here i am seeing more than uh, 50 so i would like to thank each and every participants here who spend your time here and get the valuable input from us thank you all thank you ma'am thank you so much ma'am for your inspiring valedictory address today words are not enough to express the gratitude ma'am thanks a lot for your valuable speech thanks a lot ma'am anusha ma'am thank you so it is the time to thank each and every one of you who has contributed their effort to finish this faculty development program in successful manner yes i on behalf of the organizing committee and department of software engineering i take this opportunity to propose the vote of thanks to those who have directly and indirectly contributed to this international level faculty development program on ai for educators a 6 days faculty development journey leadership is the capacity to translate vision into reality yes i would like to say my sincere thanks to our honorable vice chancellor dr v ramachandran sir most respected registrar dr p k st vidya ma'am esteemed dean academic teaching learning and evaluation dr j jaitrama and dean academic curriculum development dr violet juli ma'am and respected dean dr m sharmila behra ma'am faculty of computer science and engineering to given the permission to conduct this faculty development program a true leader has the confidence to stand alone the courage to make tough decisions and the compassion to listen to the needs of others yes it's my privilege to say my sincere thanks to my kind leader is none other than most respected head of the department dr d magesh kumar sir department of software engineering famous to given the opportunity to conduct such as a wonderful fdp thank you so much sir for your unflinching support people will forget what you said people will forget what you did but people will never forget how you made them feel yes at the outset i take this opportunity to say my sincere thanks to our eminent speakers dr m selvakumar samuel sir asia pacific university of technology and innovation malaysia dr tirumurugan shanmugam sir university of technology and applied sciences who are omen dr l rama parvathi ma'am bellur institute of technology chennai dr s appu alais balamurugan sir periyar mani me institute of science and technology tanjavur india mr navin kumar a architect prag robotics chennai india and dr vijesh ceo and founder igen services and solutions singapore thank you all for accepting the invitation and made event as a successful one alone we can do so little but together can do so much it's my immense pleasure to say my heartfelt thanks to all the faculty of department of software engineering periyar mani institute of science and technology 
Thank you all for your valuable support and guidance. Today, my words are not enough to express the gratitude to the network team of PIMAST. I would like to say my sincere thanks to Mr. Ilangovan sir, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, who has source of this faculty development program. And my special thanks to Ms. Satya, Ms. Shalini, Mr. Kodi Chilvan, Mr. Naveen, Mr. Gauri Shankar for their tireless and enthusiastic support throughout this journey. Thank you so much to all. Also, with the network team, I extend my thanks to Mr. Samuel sir, designer and editor, and Mr. John Josepha, who has stand with me throughout the journey. Thank you so much to both of you. And a life without dream is like a garden without flowers. Surely, the faculty development program is like a garden without flowers, without the participants. I'd like to convey my gratitude to each and every participant for taking the time to join with us in this journey and for assisting us in making this event a huge success. Thank you to every one of you and I proudly say that we have received 454 registrations from various institutions. Among that, we have received seven registrations from other country as Muscat, Ethiopia and Zambia. 403 registrations from Tamil Nadu and 39 registrations from various states of India. And I will proud and thank you one and all for making this event a successful one. I hope we will meet you all again in some other event in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much to all the participants. Vijesha, thank you so much for accepting the invitation. Thank you so much, sir.